Comcast IRL will be live in Miami with Patrick Bet David, Donald Trump Jr., Matt Gates, and Luke Rudkowski. Join us there. Get your tickets by clicking the link in the description below or by going to TimCast.com. Oh boy, this is a good one. New Mexico Attorney General says he won't defend a governor in lawsuits over ban on carrying guns. My duty to uphold and defend the Constitution rights, constitutional rights of every citizen, takes precedence. So let me just... Let me break, break this down for you guys, what this means, all right? Many of you probably know, but the AG is the state's top lawyer. When they're sued, it's the attorney general who is going to be dealing with drafting a, a lawsuit or a, a rebuttal or whatever and filing lawsuits on behalf of the state. And uh, this means the governor will be on her own. And I, I, don't, I don't know how she's going to pull this off. There are already lawsuits being filed. For the decree to ban guns, the AG is like, I'm not defending you. You're on your own. That's so how is her office going to do to respond to this? It's going to be default judgment instantly across the board. That's amazing. I, I mean, so. that she might actually lose her office. I mean, the, the taxpayer could lose a lot of money from this. Yeah. Well, and, and I'm, I, you know, I'm hoping and I, I mean, I could talk about it personally, but I'll just make a general statement. I'd like to see. Any attorney general, I wouldn't expect that from Merrick Garland anytime soon, but I'd like to see a widespread approach from any sort of attorneys generals that says we are not going to prosecute speech. Yeah. You bring us you bring a free speech case to us, we are not going to prosecute it. We are going to toss it out, much like what you're seeing with this New Mexico case. I think, I don't know, I've got a theory about this New Mexico case. I think it was a trial balloon. Yep. Mm, like, yes. I, I yeah. think, you know, they, they just, they knew what they were doing. They did it in New Mexico for a reason. They didn't do it in the Northeast or anything like that. And they ran this up the flagpole to see what the response would be. They enlisted this governor to do it. They got blowback. They must have seen some internal polls in the first 24 hours that were off the wall bad. And that's why they they sent out David Hogg and uh, who was the other big uh, pro guy? Oh, Ted Ted Lieu. Lieu. Ted Ted Lieu, Lieu. Lieu. yeah. All of their tweets were the exact same language. There is no state exemption to to a constitutional right. But I'd like to introduce them to their opinions during COVID because... Exactly. Yeah, quite the opposite uh, This is what they do, though. They manufacture a crisis. They make up a crisis out of thin air. Mm. And then they go down this path. And the next thing you know, you have no rights. Yeah. Right. So this, I think, was a trial balloon. It was trying to pave the path to kind of normalize this kind of thing. So while we're celebrating that it didn't work now, they're 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 taking another step to normalizing taking away your guns. And what's even more frustrating, again, it gets back to the same issue. There is no data that supports this approach. There is no data that supports this policy. Right. And in care. fact, well, and in fact, the exact care. opposite, whether it's Kennesaw, Georgia, where it's the most heavily armed county and there's the least amount of gun crime, or whether it's what happened in Brazil recently, or it, they always point to Australia and they say, oh, we got rid of the guns and the guns crime went down. Actually, when they made the new laws in Australia, more gun purchases happened. There, you, uh, I'm sorry, Owen, you were wrong. Uh, You're just wrong. There's tons of data showing that what they're doing works in a communist revolution. (laughs) Exactly. So, uh, but but so wait, are we in the communist revolution? Is that what you're currently in? But let's uh, but let's be serious. Yes. The their view on why you shouldn't have guns is not based on your view of why you should have guns. When we say things like, "Hey, look, I live in a semi-rural area, mostly rural area," and the police aren't going to be here if we if we have got a serious issue. So we need to defend ourselves. You know where and we, they do want to defund the police too. So that's not right. an out of left field argument. That's and so very relevant. the The argument that we have is if you have a gun, you are safer. The argument they have is I will lie to you because in order to steal political power, I have to take away your ability to fight back or defend yourself. And then you and and also the creation of anarcho tyranny. You look at what's happening in San Francisco. You see that viral video of the young woman being like, I parked at a, ta- what did she like? I parked at a Taco Bell or something. And then went inside for five minutes. Which one? Oh, I there's, know. There's right. dozens All of these, these now. Of Tourists. Years. That's yeah. embarrassing. As CNN, an American. Remember when CNN? They're- Twice that happened to <laughs> CNN. <laughs> and we laugh about it like, ah, you're what you sow. But it's the intent. No, it's actually. They, it's the anarcho tyranny they want. There was a story um, out of St. Louis where. A young volleyball player, high school volleyball star, was set to go on scholarship, play volleyball in high school, uh, college rather. She's at a high school volleyball tournament in St. Louis. She leaves the tournament. She's walking outside. She gets run over 
and paralyzed and can no longer play volleyball. The individual that ran her over was on release, already a multiple time offender on release, let go by a George Soros liberal attorney. And what do you know, caused harm again. But, but you know, I, I would go because here's here's where I think the legal theory needs to go. And this would probably nip this right in the bud. Let, let's let's propose a hypothetical here. Let's say that the New Mexico governor somehow is able to disarm the citizenry. OK, and let's say let's say let's say, Monica, you live in New Mexico and you're like, oh, my gosh, the governor's right. I'm turning over my firearms. OK, you've now turned over your firearms. You're a great person. The policy's working. Well, what happens and I'm sorry, I'm not trying to traumatize you. What happens when a criminal with a gun breaks into your house, rapes you, and murders you? Is the governor now complicit in that crime? How is she not? And libel. How right? is she not? You you were she disarmed. Had some legal responsibility then for disarming me. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm right. saying. If I come up and I disarm you, and then and then seconds later, somebody comes up and commits a crime to you, well. I helped cause that crime to be committed. Yeah. I made you a victim. Took a defense away, yeah. But is anybody thinking about that legal theory? Because to me, that's that's the the one thing, again, and this goes back, whether it's the illegal immigration, the Democrats hating the taste of their own medicine, that's the one thing that will always stand down a communist when they realize they're going to be held responsible when bad things happen. <laughs> when they realize they're going to be held responsible, that will stop them. They just think they're above it all. Yeah, yeah. yeah they do. Sure. Well, they're also protected from the consequences of their own policies yeah. and decisions, right? Because they live in the gated communities. They've got the, the uh, armed security and the rest. Yeah. Right. Look, throughout history, anytime the communists have come to power, one of the very first things they do is empty all the prisons. Yeah. True. So all the violent true. criminals pour out onto the streets. Why? Because communists need the violent mayhem. They need the violent yeah. chaos to destabilize society so to slam like into the, place what they want. Yep. It's so like, they look uh, like they're the ones with the, with the control and all the actual system. Yeah. It's, it's like massive. Ghostbusters when yep, exactly uh, it is. What, what was the, what was the guy's name? Peck or whatever. I don't remember. He his turns name. off the <laughs> containment field yep. and really yeah, saw yeah, the yeah, ghosts exactly in New York like City. <laughs> yeah. And so in chaos. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we can't have that. Yeah. I mean, I think that joke's been made like 800 times about how they're releasing everybody from prisons. Yeah, but it's but, true. Yeah. It's well, true. I mean, it it doesn't have to be releasing. They could just not put people in prison that are criminals. Yeah. But look, I, I, I got to say, I got to say, you know, a few people have responded when I keep saying that we're winning and they're saying, no, we've only just stopped losing. And I'm like, you've got to have morale. Yeah. You know, like if, if all of, if you're in a battle, you know, if it's an actual war and the enemy controls 80% of the battlefield, and you're making small gains, you don't go, we're really losing this one, guys, but I guess we'll keep going. You say, we're taking it, we're winning, Stormhead. And you know what I see? Sure, the left controls the institutions. Look what they're trying to do with banning guns. They're losing. These moves aren't working. It doesn't mean they're not trying and you give up. It means we're watching them break ranks. When they break ranks, you don't run away. You don't say, oh, gee, Will, uh, gee, Willie, we're losing here. You say, charge. Yep. Yep. So when I see the tremendous economic success of all of these parallel economic brands, when I see, I mean, they tried to destroy my pillow. My pillow's still around. You can't get rid of those pillows. Don't you say it's a lumpy pillow. I was gonna say don't that. you <laughs> say that's a lumpy pillow. <laughs> I saw that video. I was just going to reference that when uh, it's, it's, um, Mike Lindell in a deposition, I think it was, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. And then they, they, he mentioned, the guy says something about your lumpy pillows. He's like, how dare you? It is not a lumpy pillow. It was really good. I mean, <laughs> my pillows are awesome, by the way. But anyway, you look at that, you look at, uh, um, even right now, uh, you, you've got Cousin T's pancake mix. There you go. You got Jeremy's razors, Jeremy's chocolate, can, uh, ultra, uh, conservative dad's ultra right beer. And now their limited edition <laughs> conservative dad's revenge. Yeah, we're having good. fun. Yeah. We're having fun and laughing as we build alternatives yeah. and get rich doing it. And we keep the, the, the money within our system. Look at Rumble's success. Their new UI. Let me tell you this, the success of Rumble. I was on Instagram looking at skateboard videos and I saw a video. I think it was Paul Rodriguez, one of the most famous skateboarders in the world at his private park and Rumble Sports was on their wall. Yeah. And I'm like, when regular old skateboarders are going to rumble to watch skateboarding, YouTube's in trouble and we're winning the culture war. Because mm-hmm. rumble, the politics of rumble are all the refugees of YouTube who got yeah. censored and banned. Which are more and more. More and more. But if kids, 
younger young, teenagers are going to go to Rumble and they're watching skateboarding. What's on their recommendation list for podcasts? It's going to be real news, real information. It's going to be independent media and the machine can't control that anymore. Well, and I think too, when you talk about the emergence of Rumble as, I mean, I would say it's the number one competitor to YouTube on on a large scale. Hands down. They're really still kind of in the primordial ooze of, yep. of what they could potentially be. And as I know, as a, as a creator yourself, you know that there's a lot of bells and whistles that they're going to be needing to tinker with and fix. But they're still kind of they're still kind of crawling out of that that media ooze to to become a much better platform. But you know, when you get to the when you get to the issue that you bring up, where people say, "Oh, we're not winning," or "Oh, this is bad morale down," I think there's I think there's I mean, I could boil it down to two fundamental questions that I would respond to somebody like that, and I would just say, and and you know, maybe people will answer how they want, and I would just say. Do you believe America is worth fighting for? Yeah. Do you believe freedom is worth fighting for? Yes. I, I, I've been saying to people uh, when they say like, you know, how do I get started? I want to make videos or I want to do podcasts. I'm like, just do it on Rumble because YouTube's not safe. Yeah. YouTube's got too many barriers. It's too hard to, to exist on. And it's not worth it, especially I'll tell you this right now. The, the, this is actually really, really funny. The amount of money we make on YouTube, it's gone down. You know why? Because so many of our viewers have moved to Rumble. We now average for Timcast IRL, I think around 50,000 views on Rumble per clip. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time.